stay fresh and the ladies call me Mr. Clean. Mr. Clean. Mr. Clean. Yeah, it's the archivist, y'all. Exclusively interviewing Illa J. What up, what up? And who is the brother of the producer J. Dilla, MC Illa J? What up, yeah, let's go. <laughs> and would you like to share about your thoughts on your brother's amazing legacy? Uh, you know, uh, definitely, you know, it's like an honor to like represent, you know, for my for my bro because you know I looked up to him a lot. You know, I mean, of course, my big brother too. So it's like, you know, you know, automatically, it's just like, you know, he he was like a hero to me. So you know, it's like it's an honor to represent him. And you know, no matter what, all my shows, like, like no matter what, all the music that I put out, you know, I always like represent my bro and do, you know, feel with my bro songs on my shows just to, you know, pay homage because. You know, if it wasn't for him, he laid down the foundation for me, it was, you know, with Slum and all, all the other, all these other groups that helped me to be able to, you know, do what I'm doing today, so, yeah. And the Yancey Boys, your thoughts on this remarkable accomplishment? Like, it was like, uh, that was definitely a fun album. Like, it, um, just how it came together. Like, uh, Delicious Vinyl just happened to have those tracks for, for years, and, you know, just pretty much sitting in the vault. And, you know, it was perfect time. I just moved out to Cali, you know. I just happened to run to Mike Ross, and... Pretty much, you know, to make you know make it short like that. You know that album. I was just fun process. It was fun writing it. And I even like it was times like, like after the album, maybe a year or so after I had it out, uh, I was like, I was like, ah, I'm, I'm sick of hearing it. Like blah blah blah. You know, so I I step away from it. But then I come back to it. I'm like, dang, this is it was a pretty good album. You know, because it's just, it's just that you know, as an artist, I'm like, I'm really critical of myself. So you know, like when I make new stuff, I look at I listen to my older stuff. I'm like, ah, like. This part right here, I could have used a better word there, or you know, different stuff like that. But um, you know, just getting better at my craft. But like, it's definitely like that's a that's a special album because that, you know, you know, thanks to Delicious Vinyl helped me, you know, to help me get out there, you know, and do shows and stuff because of that album. So you know, I'm definitely like thankful for that album. And, stuff. But, and the track Timeless, let us know. Timeless. That was actually the original title for that album, and um, eventually we just named the Yancey Boys. Just you know kind of um, just representing the whole legacy. You know, I'm, I'm kind of glad that I named it that instead of Silence because, you know, that just kind of represents the beginning, you know, and, you know, showing, like, like I said, taking it back, not only to, you know, my brother, but my pops who, you know, showed me and my brother, you know, all this music and stuff. So, you know, definitely, like, Yancey Boys, that's like, you know, a, a big, you know, a big step, you know, for me to in my career, for sure. And one of the best memories sharing hip hop with your brother, would you like to share? Jay Dilla, sharing in hip hop together. Well, I'm trying to see. You know what? Like my, my brother, he was really silly. Like I, like I got a lot of funny memories. Like we would always um like we would have a singing ad lib contest where we would try to see who who could do the best uh, Al Green ad libs and stuff. I try to see uh if he still stuff like uh, we, we actually I got a you know a better story. Um, I like you know like I just love music. I mean I, it's it's a part of me. You know and um I always love being in parties and stuff, but. Not necessarily just the, the party. I love just seeing how a record can, you know, it could change the whole mood of the club or whatever. Like just one record you put it on. And that made me want to DJ. So at, at a certain point, you know, I was ready. I'm like, okay, I'm going to start DJing or whatever. So I asked my brother to teach me how to, like, okay, how, how to DJ and stuff. So he set up the turntables and the mixer. And, you know, it was pretty much a short story. But like, he was like, okay, practice. You know what I mean? And I learned so much from that. It's like, you know, end of the day, you know, he can only show me so much. You know, I got to put the work in and, and the hard work and effort to, you know, get get the best I could be at my craft, no matter what that is. You know, whether it's, you know, MCing, singing, whatever. You know, I got to, you know, put put my all into my craft and, and for me to take it to that next level. Because, you know, he he was always, like, that's one thing I learned from my bro. Like, he was always on his craft, getting better, staying ahead of the game. That's why he was, his music sound way it sound. He was like a surgeon with it. And it was, it was because he was so precise and... He was always studying, you know, and, uh, like, I learned a lot from that. And first down, can you share about this history and the soul aquariums? You said the soul aquariums? Yes. Oh, uh, yeah, well, like, that That just, that whole crew, uh, you know, Eric Wadu, Kyle, Kareem, you know, uh, James Poiser, uh, you know, all, that whole crew is just, like, some, some really talented people. I mean, it's crazy, like, I, like, just... You know, definitely, you know, a blessing to be able to be around people like that. It helped, you know, it definitely helps me as an artist to have artists like that to be around, to, you know, see how they practice their craft and how they make progress. 
And if you ready, collabing with Cardinal Official, your feelings on one of Canada's finest. Oh, he got he got joint. He got some haters. Like it's, I cannot think of this one joint. I'll be bumping it all the time. Like when I'm, when I'm back at the crib, I can't I can't think of the name of that joint. But like, like he. He he's always always been dope, always been dope. Like you know, definitely one of my one of my favorite MCs out here for sure. And being on one of hip hop's great debut achievements, share your thoughts. Oh, uh, uh, um, like well that I don't know. It's like that album definitely. It was just like just not only not only just the album, but you know the whole delicious vinyl thing. You know, it's like a trip for me because I remember my brother. You know, kind of starting. I mean, of course, he had Slum Village Super on the side as a producer. You know, that's where, you know, when the running track came out, you know, that was that was one of the tracks that really, you know, pushed him out there as a producer where, like, you know, a lot of people didn't know that he produced that track at first, but then people started to realize, like, oh, yo, he did this joint, and then started to connect the dots. Like, oh, like this joint, oh, this is the Tribe joint, oh, dang, so that's, that's Dilla. And, you know, like, Delicious Vinyl definitely opened up a big door, you know, for the, the whole legacy and stuff, you know, because... You know, of course, Slum Village too, but as a producer, like, the whole, the whole Delicious Vinyl era with, with Farside, at, like, that opened up another door. And keeping the legacy alive of your brother, how do you do this? Um, pretty much just, you know, continuing to stay dedicated to my craft and just having fun and giving my all. And, you know, like, at the end of the day, it's like, like, I've been doing this all my life, so it's like, for me, it's like, I just, like, I really just love it. And it's like, about, like, for me, it's just continuing to get better and better. For me, I just want to I want to get better each day. Every time I write something, I'm like, okay, I like I like it for a minute, but I'm like, nah, I could I could, I could, I could take that to another level, you know what I mean? But, you know, like, I just want to be the best I could be, you know, just music, and, you know. And you've been on tour for the last little while, and how has Frank been a big bro to you? Tell oh, Frank, Frank's that. always been a big bro. Like, he's like, you know, like, like I, honestly, like, that's like, you know, like besides, you know, my mom, my dad, and you know, my sister, you know, like as far as like outside of that, you know, my immediate family, like that's the closest person to my brother, you know, Frank. It's like literally like my bro, like almost like my blood bro. So you know, it's definitely you know, it's it's easy touring touring with him. So you know, you know, and like we we competitive too. Like we we got this competitive thing. It's like we always because I like how our show is. We go back and forth. So it's like like. Um, it's like I see him out there rocking the crowd. I'm like, oh dang, I gotta, I gotta bring it. He out there killing them. He killing them. So you know, like that, that energy, that back and forth. You know, make me have to elevate my game the next time I get back on stage. And you know, we go back and forth on stage. But like, it's, I mean, it's super fun. Like uh, doing shows with, with Frank. I mean, we, and we, I mean, we already got a natural chemistry. I mean, it's like literally like my bro. Like he's. He's literally, he's known me, like, he met my brother in 86, and when, you know, I was in my mom's stomach, you know, so it's like, literally, I know him literally all my life, <laughs> so, like, but that's, yeah, that's that's definitely uh, my big bro right there, for sure. And what has been one of your best songs that you've ever created, and one of the biggest crowds you've ever walked? Um, best songs? Um, I don't know, like, that, that's hard to say, because, I, like, I would like, I would like something, Today and then tomorrow I'll be like ah nah I like, I like it but then the drums is corny or like my I'm like uh like I hate my verse on that one like I'm, I'm like I be I be criticizing my stuff so like more than like critics criticize our stuff <laughs> like because like you know it's all about you know like trying to be the best you can be so it's like I you know like I'm always just trying to make improvements but um, as far as like crowds are rocked um, definitely um, hip hop camp. I think it was 08, um, like 10,000. Like that was, that was my first show where, you know, that many people, that was, it was just crazy. I was like, wow, but like, that's definitely um, like the biggest show I ever rocked. And what can we look forward to on your future projects? Um, like um, soon um, I have an EP um, that I'm, I'm releasing really soon uh, with uh, Niastra uh, and um, Young RJ on the production. Uh, we did uh, four joints. It's an EP called uh, Four Past Midnight. and. Uh, like, you know, it's, it's going to be some uh, joints on there. I got, like, I got a couple of dark, like, one joint's, like, dark. Um, other joint in between dark. Got a joint where I'm singing and rapping. So it's like, you know, it's a little mixture of everything. Like, and that's just preparing for the album. Like, the EP will come out first and then, you know, I'm still, I'm already putting together the album now. And once that's done, you know, I, like, definitely start, you'll start hearing about the full album soon. But um, the EP for sure. And you got anything to say to Canada? Thanks for showing so much love. 
you know, my my, my boy Frank and Dank been out here, you know, for a minute. You know, they y'all y'all always show show them love, so thanks for taking care of my 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 peeps. And uh, you know, like I said we definitely be back. You know, especially when I'm in Detroit. I mean, I'm I'm right by the border anyway, so I could, you know, like I'm right there, like ten minutes away. So, but um, definitely we be be back out here to do some more shows, and you know, next time, you know, I'm bring. You know, everybody that came out this time, let them know, like, yo, man, the show's dope. And then bring out your, some of your friends and tell them, sell them, you know, word of mouth. But, I mean, that's how you do it. You know, you just got to, like, I mean, at, I mean, at the end of the day, we a rock the show, whether it's one person, ten people, 10,500, you know, cause, because it's for the love. You know, it's just like about having, having a good time and, you know, just vibing off that energy, you know. But, um, yeah, definitely much love to Canada. And you got any shouts? Um, shout out to Frank and Dank, Frank Nick, of course, um, Yancey Boys, Dilla Dog, R.I.P., the whole Slum Crew, L.T. Three, by Ten, Rest in Peace, Black, Young R.J., Scrap, whole Squad, Mike Jew, Delicious Vinyl, you know, and you know all, all the peeps. Shout out to the Dilla Foundation, my Dukes. Um, shout out to my pops, Get Well, and um, yeah, for sure. And thanks to Step Up Promotions and Up in Your Basement. And this is The Archivist, and you already know the name, y'all. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah.